So many people, when they started fasting, they started to watch their body heal. And my brain went to, yeah, because you're taking a break from the horrific food. So then I started to shift some of the way that I was educating this. And I was trying to let people know, like, fasting is a healing state. But then when you go into food, you really need to look at food as medicine. And that led me into some interesting research and studies on what controls our taste buds. And one of the things that I found out was what controls our taste buds is actually the microbes in our gut. And then when you start to go into this microbe area and you're talking about inflammation and immune system, we also have microbes that start to break estrogen down called the estrobilome. So all of a sudden, like for me, food all roads point to the microbiome. So my question then leads to you is, okay, what foods can support those specific bacteria that break down estrogen? Do we know any of those? And are there ways to use food to change our, our, what we crave and our taste buds? I know those are two separate questions. No, no, it's a, these are great questions. And the area of the microbiome, that sort of ecosystem in our body is one of the most exciting frontiers yeah. of understanding Agreed. ourselves. And I, you know, I, when I've had the opportunity to mentor young people who are going to medical school or trying to choose their career, I tell them that if I were starting out now, I would immediately know to dive into the microbiome as a place that's going to change everything in the future. So, you know, I read about this in Need to Be Diseased. We have so many bacteria in our body that we are, it's about one to one, actually the last estimate. Some people say we've got a hundred times more bacteria. It's about one to one. So we're part human and part bacteria. The important thing about the research that is being done about the gut microbiome is we're understanding some of the things the gut microbiome does. The gut microbiome lowers inflammation, which is really important for Amazing. all cancers, including women's cancers, right? Yep. Number two, including breast cancer, ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, cervical cancer, melanoma, you know, lung cancer, colon can- colorectal cancer. So, you know, we, we can't easily just slot cancers. This is the women's cancer. This is the men's cancer. It's not that easy. Mm. But women are actually increasingly affected by colon cancer and lung cancer. Women who never smoke get lung cancer. So I think that, Mm. you know, we don't want to put an artificial gender line either by saying, well, we need to actually think. So gut microbiome, actually critical for lowering inflammation, boosting immunity. 70% of our immune system, by the way, lives inside the walls of our gut. Now, I was never taught that when I went to medical school, that wasn't even known. I think we thought that the immune system was like in the thymus gland, the spleen, some other places, lymph nodes. Nope. Actually, it's mostly in our gut. And so our gut bacteria talks to our immune system in order to be able to shore it up, to be able to knock down cancer. And, uh, you know, I always tell people the analogy of how our gut bacteria talks to our immune immune system is that our gut wall is kind of like the thin, cheap walls of a freshman dorm in college. Right. If, <laughs> if you've got two roommates that live next to each other, that wall is paper thin. You can hear everything. And so, what did you do on a Friday night? You yelled through the wall, "Hey, what kind of pizza do you want? What kind of topping on your pizza?" And they could give you the answer right back through the wall. And that's basically what our gut bacteria and our immune system do. They're talking to each other through that, and the gut bacteria can text message our brain in ways that actually can influence our mood. Now, something that I learned from this amazing researcher, Dr. Susan Erdman, who is a veterinarian at MIT, Massachusetts Institute mm-hmm. of Technology in Boston, she taught me that there, there are certain bacteria in the gut, and you can eat these bacteria, and the bacteria are also found in food, but you can get it as a probiotic, and one of them is called lactobacillus ruteri, okay? Yep. Uh, that yep. lactobacillus ruteri in the gut text messages our brain and what it does is it causes the brain to release oxytocin. Ooh. Now, oxytocin is a social hormone. It's, it's yes. the hormone that when the one-minute-old infant is given skin time and starts to suckle on the nipple, it releases oxytocin, is really, re- releases the milk letdown. Oxytocin is also important for uterine contractions when you're, when you're delivering the baby. And also oxytocin is important for social connection. So when you're at the airport or at the train station or the bus station 
and you haven't seen a relative in a long time or a good friend, and they come through the arrivals area and you run up there and you give them a great hug and you're really just happy to see them, your brain is flooded with oxytocin. Oxytocin also comes out of your brain when you get a kiss. And, and I'm not talking about grandma's peck on the cheek. When you get a good, <laughs> deep French kiss, oxytocin is that same feeling that when you're seeing your friend at the airport. And the other time that oxytocin floods out of your brain is during orgasm. All right. So this is actually yep. an incredibly important social hormone that has in women a very, very important reproductive and also a mm -hmm. connection between mom and baby. So you know yes. this is an important hormone. Well, it turns out that lactobacillus ruteri text messages your brain to be able to release this. So there's been studies that have been shown that in the lab, lactobacillus ruteri, when fed in the lab to animals, just through their drinking water, you know, like you ever had a hamster or gerbil and you got to put the water bottle up with the little metal yep. nozzle and the animal goes up there and starts licking it. If that's all you do is you put the lactobacillus ruteri powder into the water, mix it all up, shake it all up and let them drink it. No biggie. If these animals were prone to develop breast cancer, guess what? It would reduce the size and reduce the incidence, the development of breast cancer. Breast wow. tumor. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Right? No, I don't I want to make sure we stay on the ruteri thing because William Davis wrote a book and he had a whole community online that I remember. I brought him on this podcast a couple of years ago and they made lactobacillus ruteri. They took it out of a supplement and put it into yogurt and fermented it. And then they had everybody eat a cup of this yogurt for X amount of days and measure what they noticed in moods. And it was an incredible mood booster. Yeah. Um, they're, do they're, you they're, familiar they're, with they're, that? They're, there you go. The gut being happy and having a new a partner, the lactobacillus ruteri, yeah. text messages of the brain releases social hormones, which influence your mood. And it can really be quite profound. But here, also lowering inflammation, also yeah. boosting immunity, the, 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 the cops on a beat winging by, and maybe that's how they yeah. were actually working. The other thing about lactobacillus ruteri that's really interesting is that when you eat it in foods, lactobacillus ruteri is also in your mouth fights the bacteria that causes cavities. Ooh. All right. Okay. So what foods do you get it in? I only know it through the yogurt technique. Yeah. Well, so first of all, going back to the original yogurt, I want to talk about yogurt in a second because it's so important from gut health and overall human health and, 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 and women's health, by the way. So old fashioned yogurt that it's hard to find anymore used to have many more organisms when it was sort of made on a small scale, you know, small mm. local farms are making the yogurt and supplying it. And once it became a big factory, the probiotic quality started to go down. But lactobacillus ruteri, it can be found in some yogurts. I, I don't know which ones, but I'm always on a hunt. So if anybody yeah, knows- Yeah, you can look for it. Yeah, let, let, you should definitely look for it. And please, you know, uh, uh, DM me on social media, on Instagram or something, and let me know if you find one that has lactobacillus ruteri. That would be a winner. Uh, but you can also find lactobacillus ruteri in sourdough bread. Here's the thing. Oh. Lactobacillus ruteri, lactobacillus is n named, lac so lactobacillus is a first name, ruteri is a last name. It's actually genus and species, but let's call it first name and last name. Everybody understand that. Lactobacillus is called that because it creates lactic acid. Lactic mm. acid is what makes sourdough tangy. What we like about yeah, sourdough. Right. And that's like actually, and that so way. people going back hundreds of years, like in France, where they started on sourdough bread, they actually would take a little pinch of starter material that had lactobacillus ruteri and use that into the yeast to make the dough for sourdough bread. And then before they baked it, they would pinch it off and save it for next. So there are hundreds of yeah. years of saved lactobacillus ruteri that have been pinched off and saved over the years. So if you're going to try this, by the way, make sure that you're getting real sourdough bread and not sourdough bread made in a factory where they didn't want to waste time and they just put a little vinegar in there to make it seem like it tasted yeah. tangy. You want the real lactic acid from lactobacillus. Now, that's only one place to get it. A lot of people might okay. not realize that lactobacillus ruteri is the starter bacteria, not only for sourdough bread, but also for the real Italian Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Really? Yep. You know, it's funny because I, these, you're just named two foods that I love 
and I can't quite figure out why I love them. They're because I typically don't eat wheat and I don't do a ton of cheese, but those two pull me. And I'm wondering if it's because the oxytocin. It, it might be. But, and I'm, by the way, I'm not talking about factory made, well, you know, copy paste, yeah. you know, something that's no. called Parmes, Parme, Parmesan cheese, you know, the stuff yes. you shake out from a can. No, no. We're talking about the big blocks that you would see yes. in Italy. And you can find them in the US. You can order it that way. And it's expensive. Okay. And so you don't need a lot of it. And you shouldn't have a lot of cheese anyway. I mean, you know, cheese is a probiotic food, but it also has a lot of saturated fat and a lot of salt. So moderation can be good for you. But many people are surprised to find out that lactobacillus are also found in Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Yeah. The real Italian That's stuff. amazing. Okay. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, so we, and, and I did some research on lactobacillus ruderi, and we found that in the lab, if you are studying wound healing, that animals that eat ruderi, they take that it actually speeds up the healing of the wound as well. That's crazy. So it, it, it in crazy. fact, it doubled the rate of wound healing. So amazing. Well, and the real point is really that we're just beginning to discover the, we're at the beginning of the journey to discover the miracle of our gut bacteria. And so yeah. you're asking about like, do we know the right bacteria that actually metabolize estrogen? And right. I, I, I don't know what it is, but I don't know everything there is to know about the, micro, about the gut bacteria microbiome. I think that, you know, like when you're talking to a real scientist like me, I'm really quick to tell you what I don't know, because that's what that's what yeah. real scientists do. I don't know. I mean, that's do, right. do, do you know? Right. Do you know what is there? Is there a bacteria that does it? So Lactobacillus rominos, that's right. the other one I'm curious because so I went down a path of what's in the astrobolome. Mm. Like, what, can can we just figure out what set of bacteria break estrogen down, and then I was going to go and look at things like, you know, if you ferment different vegetables, you get a different bacterial yeah. byproduct. And so that's how I discovered ruteri. But Rhamnos, R-H-A-M-N-O-U-S, is another one that has an effect on estrogen. So I'm that was going to be one of my questions. In, in what direction? Does it actually metabolize it, breaks it down, or does it keep it, it metabolize it? No, it metabolizes it. Because here's one of my things on hormones is that we you bring up a really interesting point. We have to look at three different things when we are using food as medicine, as hormonal medicine. One is that it can help us make the hormone. Mm -hmm. There is food that will help us break that hormone down, and then there's foods that will help us detox it. Mm -hmm. And when you start to really dive into food, you realize that there's a lot of that. So the metabolizing, though, all come points at the microbiome, and that's how I geeked out on Ramanos. Um, yeah. and, I, and I think it may come from the fermentation of certain vegetables, and I haven't figured out which one. Maybe kimchi. Maybe. Right. So kimchi, yeah, kimchi has one of the, the reasons that kimchi is so great for the immune system is the fermentation of scallions. That actually has an immune component to it. Huh. In so, interesting. Um, I got you curious you, now, you huh? Now you got me curious. I'm actually looking it up right now. I'm going to see. Right. It's something fermented. For sure, it's going to be a byproduct of something fermented. Just like you said, sourdough, how do we get Ramanos? What vegetable do you ferment to get L. Ramanos? Yeah. No, I'm, I, listen, this is, th these are the, these are the types of questions. Oh, look at this. Kimchi. Yep. Sauerkraut. Tempeh. Yep. And miso. Nice. So it's the soy. So maybe it's in the soy, which would make sense. The fermentation of soy would be help with the breakdown of estrogen. And then if if you stop and you think about that, you're like, nature is so brilliant. It created a phytoestrogen that will help you make estrogen or bring you know that estrogen into your system. Then when you ferment that phytoestrogen, it helps you break it down. That would make perfect sense. It's, it's, well, we're people, talking about balance, yeah. right? I mean, this is the yeah. This is really sort of like the whole idea of hormesis, like. It's the body doesn't allow you to do too much of one or the other. The, the natural right. balance is to sort of keep things in this Goldilocks zone where everything is hunky dory within a certain zone. Yeah. Oh my God, that was so good. <laughs>